This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. We turn now to the issue of money and politics. Over the past two weeks, former House Speaker Newt Gingrich won the South Carolina primary and has surged in the national polls. Many analysts say Gingrich's rise would not have been possible without the backing of one man, multi-billionaire casino mogul Sheldon Adelson. With a net worth of over $20 billion, he is the world's 16th richest person, according to Forbes. Ahead of the South Carolina primary, Adelson do donated $5 million to the pro-Gingrich super PAC winning our future, which ran a series of ads attacking Gingrich's opponent, Mitt Romney. On Monday, it was revealed his wife, Miriam Adelson, gave another $5 million to the pro-Gingrich super PAC. Under the nation's campaign finance laws, the Adelsons could give the super PAC an unlimited amount of money in the coming months. In a recent interview with Ted Koppel on NBC, Newt Gingrich was asked about why the Adelsons would give so much money. Gingrich admitted it came down to a single issue, Israel. But what do these multimillionaires expect? They want, you give they someone want, five they million want, bucks. They want their candidate to win. But there, there has to be a... So what at the end of that? So if, if you win, what does Edelson get out of it? Well, um, he knows I'm very pro-Israel, and that's the central value of his life. I mean, he, he is very worried that Israel is going to not survive. Sheldon Adelson is the owner of Israel's largest daily newspaper, a financial supporter of Birthright Israel and a close friend of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Adelson has also supported the Clarion Fund, which produced the third jihad film, which we just discussed. The Washington Post reports Adelson and Gingrich met when Gingrich was House Speaker and Adelson was lobbying to move the U.S. Embassy in Israel from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Gingrich raised this very issue at last night's debate when he was questioned about his past claims that the Palestinians Palestinians are an invented people. It was technically an invention in the late 1970s, and it was clearly, it was clearly so. Prior to that, they were Arabs. Uh, many of them were either Syrian, Lebanese, or Egyptian, or, or Jordanian. Uh, there are a couple simple things here. There were 11 rockets fired into Israel in November. Now imagine in Duval County that 11 rockets hit from your neighbor. How many of you would be for a peace process? And how many of you would say, you know, that looks like an act of war? You have leadership unequivocally, and, and Governor Romney is exactly right. The leadership of Hamas says not a single Jew will remain. We're well, not having a peace negotiation then. This is war by another form. My goal for the Palestinian people would be to live in peace, to live in prosperity, to have the dignity of a state, to have freedom, and they can achieve it any morning they are prepared to say Israel has a right to exist, we give up the right to return, and we recognize that we're going to live side by side. Now let's work together to create mutual prosperity, and you could in five years dramatically improve the quality of life of every Palestinian, but the political leadership would never tolerate that. And that's why we are in a continuous state of war where Obama undermines the Israelis. On the first day that I am president, if I do become president, I will sign an executive order directing the State Department to move the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. To talk more about Newt Gingrich and Sheldon Adelson, we're joined by Gal Beckerman, who is the opinion editor at the Jewish newspaper, The Forward. He recently wrote an article called, What Sheldon's Money Buys, Adelson Millions Ensure Gingrich Steers to Far Right on Israel. Still with us, Linda Sarsour, director of the Arab American Association of New York. They'll explain um, what it is, the, this uh, Adelson-Gingrich relationship, why he supports him. Well, he supports it. The relationship is really symbiotic in a way. It developed, as you said, uh, in the mid-90s over issues of, of union uh, busting. Uh, Adelson wanted some help. Gingrich was able to offer it. And it developed as time went on. It seems to have helped kind of uh, in Gingrich's evolution in terms of his pro-Israel stance. Uh, Wayne Barrett recently reported in The Daily Beast that, um, you know, if you look at, at what Gingrich was saying about Palestinians and Israel in, in 2005, even, as recently as 2005, uh, it was kind of a different line. He was talking about uh, investing in their ancestral uh, lands. He was, he was really speaking a much different, different language. This has now changed. You won't hear Gingrich saying anything like that uh, anymore. Um, and it's not, you know, one can't draw a direct causal link, you know, find the telephone call in which Adelson said, you know, I want you to say this. Um, but it's not hard to imagine that if your political life depends on, on a man who has very uh, extreme right views when it comes to, to the conflict between Israelis and Palestinians, that you're going to hear that same language come, come out of that candidate's mouth. 
And uh, Adelson has a uh, a uh, determined opposition even to a two-state solution uh, in in the Middle East. He, he does. I mean, I, I in my in my column, I quote him from last year speaking to the Jewish Week, uh, saying, I believe, and I'm paraphrasing here, but that a two-state solution is a stepping stone to the destruction of of Israel and the Jewish people. Um, so, you know, this is even more uh, further to the right than the current Israeli government is, which is which is engaged now, uh, whether you know. Um, successfully or not in talks uh, in Jordan with, with the Palestinians. You have uh, a, a prime minister who, you know, whether he, he, he wants a, a two-state solution to eventually happen, he, he's speaking the language of a two-state solution. He's talking about the need for a Palestinian state. So, you know, Adelson really, you know, in the spectrum of, of political uh, belief in, in Israel, really fall, far, falls, uh, you know, to, to the right even of the, of the current government. APEC, where does Sheldon Adelson stand in his views on the um, American-Israeli political action? Right. Well, here's another example where you affairs. right. Um, here's another example where you can see that that Adelson really kind of is is on that right side of the the spectrum because he he broke with 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 APEC in 2007 over a uh, congressional initiative that APEC was was backing and that the Israelis actually were backing as well to provide more economic uh, aid to the Palestinians. Um, he, he didn't feel that this was uh, a good idea. Um, to Adelson and super PACs. I mean, the, the one thing that should be said is that, you know, we can talk about Adelson's influence, you know, uh, all we want, but there's nothing illegal about it. I mean, the, the, the real problem here is this, um, is this, this, this vehicle that he's been allowed uh, through super PACs to be able to have this kind of outsized influence, which really wasn't the case before the Citizens United um, case two years ago. And uh, Linda Sarsour, as we're talking here about the influence of Sheldon Madison, we were just discussing uh, how he helped uh, fund the the group that produced uh, the jihad film. Uh, your reaction? <laughs> I'm also I, I happen to be Palestinian too, um, uh, and I and and listening to a couple of debates ago and having my children sit in front of the TV and playing on their laptop and hearing you know our you know pr potential presidentials um, talk about the invented people and hearing Palestine and stopping and saying what does he mean by we're invented people and having to explain that to you know 12 year olds and 11 year olds it's just so disappointing in this country that money is what buys power in this country and buys influence and we actually agree one state solution one state solution over here one state solution for me is, w is the only way to go and that's a that's a, an equal state for all, for justice for all. So we can agree on that area as well. But really, the views that Newt Gingrich is spewing in these debates, he's making George Bush like, look like a walk in the park. I mean, it's getting, I mean, we're not, we're supposed to be progressing in the priest process. We're supposed to be moving forward. And what we are doing and the GOP is doing is moving back. So if the American people have any sense, we cannot let this guy go forward. Linda, I wanted to get your response to this issue of the invented people. Um, you heard it last night at the debate last month. Gingrich defended his claim that Palestinians are an invented people. The former Speaker of the House made the comment during an interview with the Jewish Channel. Jewish people have the right to have a state, and I believe that uh, the commitments that were made at a time. Remember, uh, there, were, there were, there was no Palestine as, as a state. It's part of the Ottoman Empire, uh, and I think that uh, we've had an invented Palestinian people, uh, who are in fact Arabs and were, and were historically part of the Arab community, and they had a chance to to go many places, and, and uh, for a variety of political reasons. Uh, we have sustained this, this war against Israel now since uh, the 1940s. I think it's tragic. That was presidential candidate Newt Gingrich, uh, Linda Sarsour. I mean, he must have been politically asleep for the first 50 years of his life. And he talks about us being invented in the 70s. Like, what is he talking about? I mean, I mean, it's just the, the I mean, for me, when I watch this, it's, it's just it's like a comedy. It's like Saturday Night Live. It's like, where have you been all these, this time? And for the Palestinian people, we've been talking, I mean, we've been talking about the Palestinian-Israeli conflict at least for the past 60 years. Um, so for me, honestly, I just laugh. And I think that, um, unfortunately, the way that our political system is set up is you talk about issues that are going to get you elected, depending on who gives you money. So you talk about immigration because you want Latino votes. You talk about Israel because you want Jewish votes. I mean, it's all for me a scam. And, and, and for me, I don't know about anybody else, but it doesn't, it doesn't do anything for me. And, and Gala, I'd like to ask you about the impact of the Adelson money on the general tenor of the foreign policy debate among the Republican candidates. It almost seems that he has single-handedly been able to shift the entire debate more to the right on, on a variety of issues. Right. Well, I mean, and this is what I think is the, the much bigger 
concern is that, um, you know, if you have Gingrich uh, saying the things that, that he believes Adelson wants him to say, um, nobody wants to be outflanked uh, to the right. Um, and so everyone's going to kind of move in that direction. And you get kind of this dynamic where it's kind of like toughness for toughness sake, you know, on a range of issues. Any time that talk turns to foreign policy, whether it's Cuba uh, or, or, you know, when you talk about Afghanistan, Romney was asked twice what he would do uh, with the Taliban, whether he would negotiate with the Taliban. And he said, no, we're going to beat them which, as far as I'm concerned, is what we've been trying to do for the last 10 years without much effect. So, you know, he — there is and, — and then Iran, of course, is, is the ultimate example, where everyone is trying to just kind of um, have this kind of belligerent language uh, that, that doesn't really kind of offer any alternative solutions, that doesn't kind of look um, at the, all the full implications of, of some of the things that, that, that they're saying. It's just kind of, you know, let's talk uh, as tough as possible, and it pushes people into, into a corner. Go very quickly. The is uh, the newspaper in Atlanta, where the editor was just forced right, out. Right. Can you explain what happened? Um, this was a uh, an, an editor of a of a, a very small, about 2,500, I think, is there, was their circulation uh, newspaper, one of two or three Jewish newspapers in Atlanta, who wrote this in, incredibly, extraordinarily inflammatory uh, column um, that that. That said that, that one of the things on the table in terms of dealing with Iran should be the possible assassination of, of President Obama. Um, and uh, this was uh, kind of roundly <laughs> um, condemned by everybody. The guy eventually came out himself, you know, in this kind of half an hour tearful uh, confession uh, um, a few days ago saying he doesn't know what he was thinking. And, and, um, and, uh, and you know, I, I think it's, it's possible to see this as just the production of one crank, you know, who's who. But, you know, but underneath, underneath it is, is a real kind of, um, I think, irrational fear that you see among some people uh, in the Jewish community um, that, that Obama and his policies towards Iran is somehow harming Israel. 30 seconds. How did Adelson get his fortune? He is a, a casino magnate, uh, built uh, a lot of casinos in, in, in Vegas, and in the last 15 years has grown even richer uh, through um, building the same types of resorts and casinos in, in, uh, in China. We want to thank you both for being with us. And that um, ed editor, the publisher of the Atlanta Jewish Times, named uh, Andrew Adler, Adler, said Israel should consider assassinating President Obama, uh, quote, take out a president deemed unfriendly to Israel. We're going to end it there. Gal, uh, Gal Beckerman, thanks so much for being with us. Opinion editor at The Forward, author of When They Come For Us, Will Be Gone, The Epic Struggle to Save Soviet Jewry. And Linda Sarsour, director of the Arab American Association of New York, also with the the uh, National Network for Arab American Communities. She was just named a champion of change honored at the White House. Uh, Palestinian American activist, thanks so much for both for joining us. This is Democracy Now. When we come back, we look at